Okay, very good morning. Thursday, the 11th of January. I hope you're well. Uh, just getting into the morning briefing and going to do the same routine uh, as we did yesterday. So I'll talk over a few of the key news items that we've had in focus in the last 24 hours or so. And then Sam will jump on and he'll look at the market a little bit more technically and some of the key levels uh, across assets that he's looking at. So that's what's on the agenda. And really the main kind of topic of conversation in the, the financial media at the moment still remains around this point in, in regards to China and the Bloomberg Source Report, of course, which circulated yesterday and caused a, a decent bout of volatility at the time shortly after 10 a.m. yesterday morning. So uh, just having a look at things, this uh, I've still got it marked up here. Originally, the move that we had lower uh, in the U.S. 10-year, of course, we saw weakness in in the dollar, which created uh, quite a sharp pop here. You can see in the euro dollar pair, it kind of mimicked as well in, in cable on the dollar weakness. Uh, and then equity markets also softened. Uh, so just to quickly uh, isolate the price activity, it was really around uh, this point here in, in regards to the DAX. Uh, and that was the bigger fall here that we saw at that time as well in the, the US equity market. Uh, however, one thing that you'll notice is We've stabilized since, and there's a couple of reasons for that, but let's just have a bit of a drill down into to what we're seeing at the moment. First of all, just to go over once again the importance of this news uh, in terms of the type of uh, context in which they're talking about, which is, of course, uh, the purchasing of Treasury securities. Uh, and just to refresh you, as we were talking about yesterday, this is kind of a maybe a better graphical representation of the uh, of the volume really that mainland China is buying by far and away the largest them in Japan and then there's a significant drop off towards the others which in third place would be be Ireland after that uh, and so uh, obviously the magnitude of that news at the time did catch a few people uh, by surprise but as we were just discussing things have stabilized and recovered if anything since there has been an update overnight and this was a report that came out on Reuters in the overnight Asia Pac session and essentially it reads that a report that China is considering slowing or halting purchases of US Treasury bonds may be based on erroneous information and could be fake according to the countries foreign exchange regulator so you know kind of like what i was talking about yesterday um reuters did also release their report which they're a little bit critical of what bloomberg was saying because they these were unidentified sources so as you can imagine the biggest rival news agency coming out with pretty much the opposite spin of the news if you like um, but the point being and it remains to be um is that a lot of this is just political kind of jousting ahead of key and crucial trade talks between that of China and the US. Uh, just a little snippet here from what uh, the analysts at Deutsche Bank have been saying this morning. Uh, they note a similar type of, of view. They say the possible political angle shouldn't be underestimated and the timing is apt given that the political article from last week suggesting that Trump was preparing to unveil an aggressive trade crackdown over the coming week, including tariffs aimed at countering China's and other economic competitors' alleged unfair trade practices. So obviously what they're trying to do here is just show a little bit of a, a, a show of strength ahead of that to make the US conscious of the fact that um, China does have the ability to influence the pricing of crucial markets such as the the yield curve so again markets have stabilized since and to, to really uh, just round that off you've had um, a refunding round coming out of the US Treasury and yesterday <laughs> saw a particularly strong 10-year US Treasury government bond auction uh, in fact it was the highest bid to cover ratio for a 10-year bond auction in the US since June 2016 so you know if you were immediately thinking well you know there's no smoke without fire and actually this just means then we've got a looming 10-year government auction coming out of the US be interested to see what the foreign participation is in picking up that debt well if anything 
the demand was the best that we've seen uh, in a fairly long period of time. And actually that auction in itself, if I highlight when that comes out, which is obviously 6 p.m. London time every time, you can see here that was a real uh, catalyst for initiation of the complete reversal of the entire move that we saw in the original circulation uh, yesterday morning. And then here we are, we're pretty much trading to the tick at where we were before the news came out. So markets certainly, uh, a bit of calm has returned on that situation. The whole premise of this, as we discussed a couple times yesterday, uh, essentially is pretty clear that they're not really able to hurt one another, China and the US, without hurting themselves, given the high dependency on one another in particular reference to trade. Okay, so that was that story. Uh, a few other things, though, to, to be aware of, and this is one which has drawn some attention this morning because there's been some decent moves in the Canadian dollar. Uh, an exclusive by Reuters saying, Canada increasingly convinced Trump will pull out of NAFTA. Let me just show you the, the CAD chart, and I think Sam might have a look at this when he comes on as well. But just quickly as a, to show you the news, at around 7 o'clock last night, you can see a really powerful move to the upside here. This is dollar CAD. So, of course, this is uh, CAD weakness. And then as Europe has stepped into the market, because this was quite late London time, you've had a bit of a, a secondary phase move on the back of us returning to the market and reacting to that. Some resistance found on the initial spike high. And obviously, these are year-to-date highs for the dollar CAD pair. Uh, so the American Free Trade Agreement... Uh, why is this in focus? Why are people talking about it right now? Well, this is all part of a, of a chain and sequence of, of events where officials are due to hold a sixth and penultimate round of negotiations in Montreal, Canada. And that's going to happen between the 23rd and the 28th of January in order to bridge differences at the moment. Um, on the back of this story last night, Canadian bond prices... Um, rose across the yield curve, trade sensitive stocks in Canada fell, the Mexican peso got hit, the Mexican stock market fell. So obviously, you know, the US breaking up this NAFTA agreement, as we've seen many times before, and the read across for other assets related to Canada and Mexico as part of this agreement in particular, they would feel the pain the most. Uh, they do remain highly sensitive to developments on this front. Um, one thing is though, Canadian officials have said that if Trump does announce a U.S. withdrawal, it could be a negotiating tactic designed to win concessions. Uh, the talks are scheduled to wrap up by the end of March. Uh, so if you think about it, there's a lot of political things that are ongoing in the world in Q1. We've, obviously, we know about the big key EU summit for Brexit coming uh, towards the, the mid to latter part of March. You've also got uh, the Italian elections on the 4th of March. You've also got uh, the pursuit of the coalition government in Germany. You've also got NAFTA. You know, lots of things coming up in Q1 and, and certainly a very much so welcome vo bout of volatility in 2018. Uh, I'm quite pleased to see is off to a good start. And with this focus on yields and tightening of, of balance sheets and normalizations of central bank policies, I really do hope that um, this era of incredibly low volatility that we've had through 2017 comes to an end and, and it will be, all be better trading conditions for, for all. Uh, but NAFTA, a couple things I just wanted to mention because I often do get the question of, you know, what is NAFTA? Why is it important? And we've just said that those Mexican and Canadian assets reacted quite violently to the news when it broke last night. Well, uh, I've kind of defined it here. I found a piece that looks at five key points of, or six points of what NAFTA is. Just in summary, uh, first point, NAFTA grants the most favoured nation status to all co-signers. Uh, that means that essentially countries uh, must give all parties equal treatment. Secondly, NAFTA eliminates tariffs on imports and exports between the three countries. Uh, so tariffs are taxes used to obviously make foreign goods more expensive. Third, exporters must get certificates of origin to waiver tariffs. Uh, so you can't kind of make something in Southern America in, say, Peru and then ship it via Mexico to circumvent it. It needs to have a certificate of proof of origination. Uh, fourth, NAFTA establishes procedures to resolve trade disputes. Uh, and obviously this is um, 
particularly important uh, on the global trading front. So they have essentially a, a specific chapter in their articles which talk about unfair practices. Uh, fifth, all NAFTA countries must respect patents, trademarks, and copyrights. Sixth, the agreement allows business travelers easy access through all three countries. Uh, and then that pretty much wraps up the main kind of key key points. So um, obviously the point of this has been that um, Trump has been saying for a long while that America gets a bad deal out of being in this situation in terms of on a global platform having to deal with other countries the biggest obviously countries to compete with uh, a lot of the likes of the EU as a whole as a block and then also China of course um, NAFTA increased the competitiveness of these three countries in the global marketplace again the whole purpose of NAFTA of course then as I just said is to better compete with China and the European Union so this is definitely something to watch and it, and it is still creating some pretty decent um, short-term fast money opportunities when the news is coming and given the fact that that sixth round of talks um, in regards to NAFTA negotiations is a, on a higher level of those three countries is taking place at the end of the month I think it's something worth just being aware of because probably between now and then you're going to get more source comments more noise out of Trump via probably Twitter and so on which might offer up a bit <coughs> of opportunity as a catalyst to initiate price movement uh, in the Canadian dollar. All right, a few other things quickly, and then I'll hand you over to Sam. Uh, this is one thing, looking at Brexit update. I'm sure the Brexit tiers will be cheering because people in the city basically uh, are not getting jobs. <laughs> so job vacancies in London's finance industry were down 52% in December alone, the most in three years. Uh, and obviously this comes amid uh, a large number of uh, big employers, big banks in the financial sector based in London have said they're considering moving of their operations into mainland Europe, Frankfurt, and so on and so forth. It's meant that we've seen what's been deemed by the recruitment firm that compiled this data a seismic drop in the sign of Brexit impact. Um, so, as I said, although probably much of middle England if you like will probably cheer at the fact that the bankers are getting the worst deal the net result of this from an economic impact obviously given the size of the tax receipts that come out of the financial sector in the UK is quite devastating for the output of UK economic uh, as being a, a financial center of the world in that sense so uh, just some updated signs here on the, the Brexit front of the pre-positioning if there's a hard Brexit situation and, and so on and so forth. One thing I've not talked about in a while, and I, I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but there's been a bit of price movement. Of course, Bitcoin. Bitcoin has dropped 14% uh, overnight. Comes after South Korea's justice minister has said the government was working on a bill to ban cryptocurrency trading amid a clampdown on virtual currencies. In, don't forget, this is one of the bigger markets when it comes to crypto trading, is South Korea. Uh, Bitcoin this morning has recovered a little bit, uh, but it is trading uh, quite a bit lower at the moment. So this new regulatory, this is kind of the phase that Bitcoin and crypto really needs to go through in order to become a more legitimate kind of investment product, I guess, for the broader financial markets to really buy into. Uh, it does fly against the kind of initial concept of its creation but it does require some kind of regulation and so at this point uh, the things that have been happening have all been on that front and met negatively uh, by most occasions uh, so that's that story but it ov obviously comes on the coattails as well of what we had at the beginning of the week where if you think about the mining of Bitcoin I, can't, I remember a percentage, I think it's about three quarters or 75% of all of the uh, mining of Bitcoin globally is done in China. So you've probably seen the photos, massive big warehouses the size of a football pitch, which is just full of computers uh, conducting complex mathematical formulas to 
solve the blockchain and issue more more coins in, in a sense so after the uh, the lockdown on uh, ICOs that we've seen uh, a few months ago China is now moving to wipe out its Bitcoin mining industry following concerns of excessive electricity consumption and financial risk in the latest sign of Beijing's hostility to cryptocurrency. So they basically issued a multi-agency task force to start shutting down some of the mining sites that are taking place. And I think on a mining perspective, I was reading a stat that by um, in the near future, the energy consumption of just mining coins for Bitcoin individually will be the same energy consumption as to power the country of Argentina. Uh, just to give you a, a bit of an idea. And obviously what China are unhappy about is about the, the circumvention as well of legitimately paying for the use of that electricity because a lot of these mining sites are based in very <coughs> rural areas, off-grid, if you like, in that sense, and they're not making money out of it, and so on and so forth. Uh, so just thought I'd point out a few things because Bitcoin's seeing a bit of price movement uh, overnight. All right, look at the calendar, and then I'll hand you over to Sam. So this morning, things are pretty quiet. Um, you've got the industrial production numbers coming out in Eurozone at 10 o'clock. I'd probably keep an ear out for that, but not expecting any fireworks. Kind of similar degree with the ECB minutes. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily feel particularly comfortable holding a position over the minutes, even ir uh, irrespective of the fact that uh, they're usually non-market moving. I'd say if you are in something, maybe just lightening it up slightly just to mitigate uh, any unexpected movement or details that are unveiled from their conversations from the last meeting. So the ECB minutes, that'll be at 12.30. Uh, and then going into the afternoon, you've got your weekly regular jobless claims. Uh, then you get the big build-up towards the inflation. Insight we'll get for the US, culminating in CPI on Friday. So it's the PPIs which we'll get as the, the main figures at 1.30. Uh, going further on, Fed's Dudley, speaking on economic outlook, that'll come uh, much later in the evening, so probably when most of you guys aren't here. So something for consideration when you come back into the market yesterday. And actually, just as a quick point of note, there's been a number of Fed speakers uh, yesterday, but all of them were non-voting members. But what's been quite interesting about Fed speak has been um, quite a divergence in view at the moment uh, from Fed's Bullard talking about the Fed should consider, consider targeting inflation above 2% for a period to make up for past misses on the low side. Fed's Evans reiterating his dovish view, whereas Fed's Kaplan saying that the Fed should go ahead and execute three rate hikes. So definitely some mixed opinion about the future direction of monetary policy. So whenever some of the voters come out, it's definitely going to be interested to see what they have to say. But I guess greater clarity might not come really until... Powell takes over. The other thing to keep in mind, uh, fixed income supply coming in, you've got quite a large amount of Italian issuance hitting the market. Likewise, uh, in gilts, uh, the UK Debt Management Office with a longer dated 2037 issue for two and a quarter billion. And you've got the final longer dated um, auction coming out of the US this evening. All right, let me hand you over to Sam. I wish you guys a good day. And I'll catch you in the chat room later on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Morning guys, yeah, as Ant said, just going to go over some of the charts for you and any questions obviously get them uh, in the chat either now or, or later on. So starting off with, and it's not too far away from quite uh, an interesting level as mentioned yesterday, uh, the CAD weakened significantly and we're not too far away from the high we made uh, well, late last evening. Uh, I was in the office when it happened, um, just staying behind to do a bit of work just before watching possibly the most boring football game of the year of Arsenal-Chelsea. Um, and you can see the resistance we found here late December, uh, just before coming back down, and then the rumour, uh, well, sorry, the White House official saying Trump's policy, or Trump's uh, stance has not changed, and we came back down only to just to move a bit higher as the market sort of realised, well, he doesn't necessarily want uh, the deal that they've got in place at the moment. So worth keeping an eye on that if we can push higher. Um, obviously R1, the next sort of mathematical level uh, in the way, but before that you do have some previous lows from the back end of December that would uh, offer some resistance in the short term. 
uh, for, for the CAD. Switching over to PAM, which you know, hit the uh, S1 uh, this morning, we've had another test of that level. Uh, I did pop into Trading Live, uh, an area just below that I was looking at, 134. Uh, 90 or around about there uh, on the futures level that if we to get through there would offer quite a good area of support for, well from a technical point of view anyway uh, into the back end or last trading day of the the year uh, in 2017 where we really did start to push on and, and since then we've really been sort of drifting down as with the euro uh, as you can see near the low of the day we had that sort of double double bottom uh, test this morning Areas to be aware of, if we can go through there, you've got yesterday's low and, uh, and the low from Tuesday before. Quite a good technical area of support with S1 and the low of the 28th, I would definitely look to consider. Data-wise, as Ant mentioned, it's not really to the afternoon with the US data and tomorrow that we might see uh, a sort of maybe a fundamental change from that. So I'd look to probably continue that trend uh, for the short term anyway. Elsewhere, Aussie dollar. Uh, near that sort of high of 2018 that we saw this morning um, just marking <coughs> up that uh, level there and if we were to push on you can see where we haven't really been around here since the um, uh, the 13th of October so good area of resistance there for Aussie dollar so it might worth be looking to go long from a bit lower down uh, or um, definitely taking profit around that 78.91 area uh, as well, I know a few people were uh, in the uh, the dollar yen this morning. Found decent resistance at at the pivot level, which is also, as you can see here, if I just get the line pretty much bang on uh, resistance from uh, yesterday morning, and uh, you can see that's held quite well for now, and starting to drift back down. So a couple of uh, interesting opportunities or potential areas to be aware of for for the currency markets uh, going forward. As well, looking at oil, just going over to the commodities, you can see oil there briefly. If I just lower the time frame down, it was about five minutes ago, or a few minutes ago, sorry, just pushing to uh, a new high, albeit very, very, um, uh, very small scale there. So worth keeping an eye on oil, and I think you've got to prefer the, uh, the upside for this move still. Uh, I had a level one just below where today's R1 is, 63.72, so something I would still have on there. Uh, level not seen since oh, I think well 2014 so definitely worth having on that I would say can we get a bit of a trend line on here it's not that great but I would uh, say for oil following yesterday's sort of messy DOE you can see here if I just circle this area um, I'll take that sort of out of the equation it looks really for perhaps uh, a long and a, and a break of that that high that we've seen today and yesterday in R1 and uh, where the, the possibilities for it to push on are, are, are definitely there. Gold, slightly more messy. If we have a look, obviously, the, yesterday morning we, we pushed on quite a lot before coming back down, and then towards the end of the day, as I just circle here, you can see no real direction. Um, there may well be some data that sort of gets us out of there later on, or uh, some risk on, risk off sort of correlations, but for me, I think better to sort of wait for a break out of that range before really getting involved for a, well, a longer lasting trade anyway, uh, between that sort of high and low of the day. And then you've got to the downside a couple decent areas of support, which could then open up to the lows that we saw, well, yesterday uh, in the very early hours uh, as well. T notes, definitely worth having a look at. And I had this trend line on let me just make this chart slightly smaller and let me just get the trend line here just going from the previous days uh, lows sort of matching up quite nicely with that R1 and it's held for now so we'll be, uh, we'll be focusing on that to see if that, that holds or if we can break through there and sort of you know really erase I mean it's already been erased that sort of down move but I'd still prefer to the downside it might be worth having a look for a short perhaps around uh, these lows I'm just circling uh, around here but again data could obviously push us one direction or, or another there footseat with the pound moving down this morning did I think get a test of that R1 yep not too long ago uh, we're still in a quite a nice uptrend I'd still prefer the FTSE 2, the upside, let's just see if we can get a bit of a trend on here and you can see how well that's actually been respected using the 
well, the, the key sort of pullbacks for, for the whole year, 2018, and it might well be that if we can get down to what is the low of the day, it's going to coincide perhaps later on with the bottom end of that trend line. So something I would definitely look to, to have on there for FTSE. Other equities, if we go over to the US, start off with S&P, it's going to lower the time frame here. You can see we've had a couple of tests already uh, of the day's high. We probably could get a bit of a trend line in here. We're sort of getting squeezed, so definitely worth having that on. Uh, push higher might well come with conviction in the afternoon, and even, even saying that, you've got the R1 before a potential test of those all-time highs. The low from yesterday, if I just mark that up here, 27.36 and a half. Scroll back, you can see just how important that support level was from the, uh, the Monday low. So very good technical support. Buy the dip still working, um, albeit not a massive one, but we push now back up and you know can't be surprising to, to come 4.30, 5 o'clock when we sort of shut up shot to, to say we've made a new all-time high. Moving over to the Dow, looks pretty similar picture. You can see here, just going to lower the time frame to that 15 minute. We've had a couple of sort of tests of that high. We're getting squeezed in. Might be worth seeing if you can get some sort of trend line on here to see if we can get uh, down to there, perhaps potential buy. But again, you've got the R1 before um, the all time high, which is pretty much in line. If I draw that up here, you can see just before. So it might be worth later on volume coming into the equity markets that a break of that all-time high and R1 is, is the sort of the trade to go for um, target wise when it runs out of momentum or, or the R2 next sort of resistance point. NASDAQ just to finish up the uh, the equities you can see similar near that high of the, uh, the day in fact yeah just a couple of ticks below that would also be aware for this market you've got yesterday's highs just above so well volumes low it might be worth actually getting a, a proper break of that level um before before getting a push just seen there in the chat talking about oil just picking up a bit volume wise having a look at that, that high uh, again so definitely worth keeping an eye on oil and then obviously canadian dollar from that uh, as well which has been boosted from oil oil's increase of late uh, despite uh, yesterday's down move that we saw um, any questions obviously get them in, in the chat about any of the charts I'll be as as yesterday just popping in, in sort of charts that I'm looking at trend lines that I have on um, as well just going to finish up before that sorry on on the DAX which did fill the gap this morning and maybe I'll put it on a five minute just to show it a bit clearer you can see we gapped higher took a, a bit of time before filling it's just uh, just after eight o'clock filled that and it's been quite messy since then really so probably best to sort of stay out of that unless we can get a, a further push of the low uh, and attack the, the sort of lows we saw yesterday afternoon before possibly getting down to the morning um, so obviously that, that thin liquidity uh, of the DAX in the morning doesn't take too much or too many orders to, to move it uh, been quite choppy already that we've seen but yep any questions get them in the chat or private message me uh, if you want but if not I'll, uh, I'll catch you all uh, later in the day